Oh yeah. We got some good product coming your way today in this episode of Pod Jerking. Big up, Pod Jerking the house. Mm-hmm. Welcome back, dear friends. I, the Lord Grand Duke of Internet Audio, will be acting as your chaperone in this episode of Pod Jerky. Because as we all know, leaving you all alone with those two is very unsafe. I've been informed that Master Impressive and Director Awesome will inflict upon you all I, I mean, they will be serving up a new podcast format they are currently testing, aptly named Spicy Spicy Really Hot, Damn Hot, Too Hot to Stop, Smokehouse Jerky, a mashup of semi-lucid streams of consciousness and blatherings that are sure to entertain and leave you with mouths wide open and shaking your heads. Shall we begin? Good. Take it away, pod donkeys. I, I, I meant to say pod jerkies. Or did I? From weird to serious to the comical and the stupid, we have it all in this episode of Pod Jerky. Hello and welcome. We're your hosts, Master Impressive and Director Awesome. For those of you who are new listeners to our channel, please take a moment and subscribe. If you have any topics that you'd like us to discuss in future episodes, or if you have any questions and would like us to get back to you, then please leave a message in the comment section, and we'll try very hard to get back to you as soon as we can. Thanks for listening. First off, I just wanted to give a big shout out to Lady A.M., She's been having some issues right now with her dad and she's been going to the hospital, taking him to the hospital every day because he's doing, I think, chemo, correct? Yes. Yes, that's what she's doing right now. When you talked to her, what was she saying? Basically just saying that uh, she has to go there every day because he's doing, well, five days a week because she's doing uh, treatment with her dad and she doesn't want to leave him by himself. So basically she's just taking him there. They have to get uh, screened every time they go in. It's, it's a little bit rough seeing in the situation that we're in right now with this whole pandemic uh, to have to go to the hospital every day with the chance of catching it and her dad having a lower immune system right now or a compromised yeah. immune system right now uh, is very difficult for, for her, I guess, and for her dad. So uh, shout out to, to Lady AM. We love you. Uh, we hope everything's good with your dad. I was just going to say that if she's listening, and she probably is, I know that she subscribed to the uh, the podcast, but uh, just wanted to let you know, Lady Am, that we are thinking of you, and even if perhaps you don't get a lot of contact from us, you know, you're always on our mind, and we hope everything's well with you and your dad and the rest of the family. And, and, and while you're at it right, right now, go and get yourself a tissue, because we know you got some tears in your eyes right now. <laughs> because uh, we're talking about you don't worry about it everything's going to be good everything's going to be okay everyone's going to pull through this all together and secondly this is a really really important shout out and this is going to all the healthcare workers emergency personnel workers our armed forces everyone from the local cashiers to the at the grocery stores to those who keep our economies our food production our fuel depots open everybody that's ready to serve and helping on the front lines to all of you, a gigantic thank you from the guys at Pod Jerky. We really and truly appreciate your efforts during these difficult times. And I sincerely mean that because I know a lot of people that go to work every day and they're they're afraid too, but they do it. They just, you know, they put their pants on, they roll up their socks, they just go in and they just get it done. And they're, they're troopers. And thanks so much for all your efforts. It, it really means a lot. Thanks for allowing us to stay home and stay healthy while you guys put your health and your well-being on the line, seeing your families less and us having a chance to see our families more. You guys are the heroes of this generation right now with what's going on. To get into this uh, this episode here, just the past couple of days have noticed that things have changed so much in such a short period of time. The current situation has pretty much everything shut down. We didn't you really know, take it. We didn't take it seriously from the beginning, right? We didn't understand how quickly things would change, 
and how serious they would get. We just thought this would be just another regular flu season, another virus, you know. You can't take anything for the viruses, but you stay home, you just, you get through it, you drink, take your medication, whatever you can, keep the symptoms down, and, and that's it. You just It just works its way through your system. But I've noticed that surrounding this whole pandemic crisis, that there there's a lot of things that I'm seeing that I don't like. For example, I keep hearing that martial law is being implemented in many areas of the world. And Director Awesome, you were telling me that you've heard this too and that you keep hearing that it's going to be coming and pretty much we won't be able to go anywhere or do anything. Well, I kind of called this from the beginning. I said this is what's going to happen because of the stupidity of people. And there's actually a video online on YouTube that's floating around right now, I believe, of um, a little girl in Kingston who took a video of military uh, vehicles on a rail track that were being brought in Mm -hmm. um, somewhere here to one of the bases just so that they could deploy some of the military because people actually are not taking this seriously and and what's happening is is you're seeing videos on the news you're seeing videos online of a lot of people still taking their children to parks uh, people still gathering in in larger groups than 50 and, and I know that that number is going to go down as well. And, and this is where it's going to end up, that they're going to put us in a complete lockdown where we're not allowed to leave our houses for anything. And this is just because people are not taking this serious enough. I had this conversation yesterday. I'm part of a group on a social media platform with um, the kids that I coach at uh, school. And yesterday they were saying again, uh, once again, that they were going to try and do a practice on Friday. Now, guys, if you are listening, you need to take this more serious. I told them straight up on this social media platform that you are not to go out. I'm not your father. However, you need to understand that you guys going out And I get the the complex of the younger generation thinking, you know what, we we have a Superman mask on and we're immune to this and nothing's going to happen. But the reality is that you're you're actually carriers of this if you catch it and you could spread it on to an older person, to your grandmother, to your parents, and it could seriously affect them. And, you know, I had this argument with them online just to say, guys, please, like, do not go out and just leave it alone and just, you know, baseball can wait. I was listening to the news with somebody at the governmental level talking about uh, the health risks and the government could potentially take measures to shut down social gatherings. So pretty much martial law, because that's what it would be. But that they're hoping, they're hoping that people listen, you know, stop being dumbasses. You don't have to go into your concrete bunker in, in the middle of Antarctica to get away from all this. If you think you're sick... If you're not feeling well or if you're in contact with somebody who has symptoms, just stay at home for a while. 14 days, just keep your distance from other people. Like you can still use the the telephone, you can still use email, you can use Skype, you You can 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 use a whole bunch of different social media platforms, right? Uh, Yeah, like Skype, like we're using right now. So before before we go any further, we're going to apologize just a little bit for the audio quality because... We are practicing our social distancing. Uh, Master Impressive and I are doing this recording over Skype right now just so that we don't have to get together and risk any uh, health concerns or anything like that. So like we're doing right now to record an actual podcast episode, you can actually do with your family as well. Now, I know a lot of people are actually listening to the guidelines and following the guidelines, but there are those people that are are actually not listening. And and that brings up an interesting point because Cuomo, who's a governor of New York City, um, actually has requested that New York reopens their streets. And at first glance, I thought, hey, you know, what a, what a dumb idea that would be because, you know, you're just going to encourage people to go outside. But in turn, it was actually a plea for help to stop people from going outside side because he took a drive out on Sunday morning. He witnessed a whole bunch of people at farmers markets gathered together in big crowds and at parks. And he said, if we open up the streets, it's going to spread people out. So he's trying to get the spread of people to be further distanced apart than he is to try and gather them all into one little area. So it kind of makes sense in that way. The only thing people have to realize here is, yes, everybody's concerned. You don't want to go crazy and have this sort of mania out there or just like, oh, it's the end of the world. You know, zombies are just around the corner and things like that. But still, take precautions. 
And for example, um, my grandmother's in the local long-term care facility. She's in her 90s. We haven't been able to see her now for a couple of weeks, and I'm all yeah. for that. I really miss her, and I, I there's no way to contact her unless by telephone, but she can't even really communicate through the telephone. So well, there's, it's there's the that, same but. as my grandparents. They're in the long-term care home, too. They're in their 90s. Mm -hmm. And even if we did call them by telephone, they, they can't actually hear the phone ringing. So they don't even pick it up. So That's they right. have some yeah. loss of hearing and they're trying to set up a Skype account for all of the uh, people that live there so that they can actually communicate with us. So uh, who knows what's going to happen uh, in terms of that, but uh, hoping we'll be able to communicate with them soon. We do miss our grandparents and we, we do want to talk to them. We do want to visit them but we know what's safest right now and uh, that's staying away and i just wanted to mention one thing because i know that uh, my folks have been trying to call relatives that are out of the country and the telecommunications grid is completely swamped so if you're trying to call somebody in another country so let's say i'm trying to call somebody in europe the chances of actually getting through are maybe i don't know 40 percent but then actually carrying through with the whole conversation is probably 10% because most of the time it gets cut out. And that's mainly because the only avenue that people have to communicate with each other is the telecommunications grid. So you have email, cell phone, uh, you have the social media platforms and everything is just getting tsunami right now. So that, I, that's I, gonna I, actually go back to our Skype conversation right now that if you do hear cutting in and out, it's probably because Everybody's on the internet right now, and the servers are oh, slow, sure. the bandwidth is slow, uh, everybody's at home, so a lot of people are taking this as a chance to watch Netflix shows, which is using the internet to do that, and being on social media calls and being on their phones or computers all day long uh, just to kill the boredom, right? So you will get those in and out cuts from us. Um, yeah, you know, it's... It's funny, my brother texted me and he said, can you please tell the folks to put the phone down because I've been trying to contact them now for like four or five hours and it's busy all the time. And I said, okay, I'll contact you back and I'll tell you when you can call, when you can get in your like your two second window so you can get your yeah. call in. So <laughs> it did yeah. work out. He was able to talk to the folks, so that worked out. But um, That's good, yeah. I'm really surprised that the internet is as smooth as it is right now. I don't know how you find your connection. Mine has been pretty good. I haven't dropped anything yet. Even like the uh, actual data networks for your cell phones when you're not mm -hmm. connected to the internet have actually worked fantastic so far. So kudos to those companies for keeping everything up and running and not capping our data or not charging for overages right now because they do understand understand the situation we're in they do understand that everybody's at home and that we do have to use extra internet while we're here or extra data while we're here they did take off the cap on everybody's uh, cell phone plans or internet plans right now kudos to them for doing that I actually didn't know about that like I haven't been watching the news lately at all just because I've been doing the editing with the podcasting and mm. working on some of the artwork for the social media platform so I've been pretty much in the dark about everything That's well I'm good. gonna say I'm gonna say it was from my provider and i'm not giving them a shout out to uh, get free advertisement on our show because well, maybe I've you had should more, i don't know <laughs> uh, i've had more arguments with them than i care to yeah that. i know I so know. i'm not going to give them a free shout out so i am Got giving it. them kudos just for doing what they're doing right now and mm -hmm. uh not capping and not uh not charging people over just for anything but that's all i'm going to go into about that one okay all right yeah i got it Okay, so I just wanted to move on to the meat of the episode here, some of the interesting things that I've been noticing, and I discussed this with Director Awesome previously. So just out of curiosity, yesterday I had some free time and I decided to plug in the COVID-19 and Corona names into a RAF name generator. And we've used this in the past and some of the results are really funny. So anyways, I just said, oh, what, what the heck? Let me just try this. And some of the results were really weird. And I'm sure you will find this just as interesting as we did. Now, first off, I put in the COVID-19 name. And one of the results that came up was Devil Bold. Now, this really makes a stark impression, doesn't it? And it does, we can yes. have a full show discussing this one result as it relates to the spiritual aspect of the virus and people's take on it. Who knows? We might actually do a show on this topic. You know, leave a comment if you'd be interested in something like that. 
when this came up, I was just like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Some of the other results that came up were Fist Midnight, Menace yeah. Charitable, Prophesier Impressive. The next one is Dragon Wild, Destroyer Wandering. Let that one sink in there for a few seconds. Then there's Sir Sinister. This next one really caught my attention too. Prophet Chesty. And that one really grabs your attention since the virus affects your breathing capability, right? We also have Breaker Visible, Fiend Slothful, Tormentor Active, Murderer Sinister. Yeah, well, check mark on that one. And to finish off, we have these last few, which were, I, you know, I was thinking they are very appropriate. So the first one is Traveler Foolish. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. The next one, Controller Sick. And to round those off, Killer Philosophical. I also put in the Corona name just by itself. And, you know, the results were quite a bit less. And they were as follows. Master Biter. Use these as uh, rap names if you wanted to. <laughs> Hoodoo Visible, Conqueror Hostile, Destroyer Arrogant, Thug Quick. And now this next one, since this all started in China, the result is Yellow Peril Vulgar. Remember, I didn't make any of these up. This is a rap name generator using some sort of AI or some algorithm that they're using. And that's what it came up with. Isn't that interesting, huh? Let me just add something right now um, that just got announced in Ontario. The premier has just ordered the closure of all non-essential businesses. Everything mm -hmm. is shut down. Essential businesses will remain open. Everything else is closed down. That was just an announcement that was just made. Sorry to interrupt you there. The essentials would be gas, food, hospitals, hospitals, anything else that deals with our health and safety. And they've already made the announcement that school will not be returning as of April 6th. I foresee that they're probably like we were discussing earlier, that they're just going to shut down the, the whole school year. And maybe if we're lucky, we might get back in September. What What do you think yeah. about that? That That's my feeling right now. The closure is extended. I'm going to say actually... Thank you to my wife, who can probably hear me upstairs right now. Uh, she's actually texting me this stuff as I'm doing the re recording on the p uh, podcast right now. So, Well, that's um, cool. Thank you, Mrs. Yeah, awesome. Uh, that's very much yeah. appreciated. <laughs> yeah. The uh, closures are going to be extended. So April 6th, they are not returning to school. We are not returning to school. We don't know what's going to happen with us either we may be laid off we don't know yet uh but that's a whole different ball game so let's not yeah. get into that right now we got lots to talk about so some yeah. of the other results that came up with regards to the corona name and the rap generator were fast that's it it just said fast the next one was a villain governing assassin empathetic wow <laughs> well wow. this one just takes the cake eh? i mean assassin empathetic the next one is Vanquisher Sardonic, and Sardonic means scornfully or cynically mocking. And huh? I'm going to interrupt you once again, sorry, because we do have some breaking news, some more breaking news, that the Tokyo 2020 Olympics has been postponed. Well, I, I would made hope a decision so. to postpone it. Canadian athletes were actually told that they will not be going to the Olympics, but the IOC has actually postponed due to the coronavirus outbreak. So that's another breaking news that has just come in right now. Once again, sorry to interrupt you, but I am getting these uh, feeds to my phone right now uh, that are telling me all this breaking news that's happening. You have your in-house reporter there sending you the feed directly. No, that's well, good. I, I, yeah. I've got that and I've got feeds coming to my, uh, my phone right now. And uh, that's one of the alerts that I just got. So keep them coming. Yeah. Uh, and I was yeah, about to yeah. say that sanity has prevailed with those people that wanted to go ahead with the games like there were no issues at all. Because I remember hearing that on the news and everybody that I spoke to, they were saying, well, um, no, that's stupid because you're going to have all these people concentrated into one area and it's just going to be just crazy. So and, it's good that they and actually And this whole thing will start over down. again. 
yeah, or it'll just ramp everything up to the level where, you know, if anybody has ever watched the Resident Evil movies, you know, Raccoon City, well, there you go. All right, yeah. so let's let's go on with some of these other names here. Let's see if I can remember where I was. We did Vanquisher Sardonic. Um, then there was Waster Master. Huh? How about that one? To close it off, Murderer Speedy. I don't know if it's the, the Nets AI that was just screwing with me here, or is there another darker, more sinister component at play? I hmm, I don't know. I think we should put up that episode in the future, you know, the one that looks at the spiritual side of this after all. Like, wh what do you think? I, sh I think we should, because there's a lot of people out there who are looking at it from that lens, that there's a battle going on in the world, that everything's just, it's frontline war now. It's just a battle between the two forces of good and evil between freedom and suppression and things like that. That would be an yeah. really interesting episode to talk about. Oh my, my dumbassery detector has just gone through the roof. I detect something stupid this way comes. Hold on. There's still a lot of people out there that aren't taking this serious enough. And uh, this is what's going to continue the spread of this virus. Now, I was watching the news this morning and... <laughs> Down in Florida, I know Clearwater Beach, their beach is still open down there. And a bunch of the spring breakers, the American kids, all went down there and did their spring break partying and all that. And turns out that a whole whack of them have come back and tested positive for this virus. Now, oh, that's just great. I don't know. You know, I don't know why the beach didn't close. Apparently, it closed as of this morning. Um, but but the whole spring break, these kids were out on the beach partying together in huge, huge groups out on the beach. And and I, I, I really don't think that they were taking it serious enough to the to the point where they're, you know, we're going to go out, we're going to drink, we're going to party, we're going to do what we want, and it's not going to affect us. And this is exactly how the spread occurs. Now, the report coming out is, and I, and I don't know, I, I, I have nothing to do with this report, but the number numbers that are staggering right now in the U.S. are in eight weeks, 56 million Americans are going to be infected with this Wow! if we don't put a stop to this. And that's, that's a huge number, 56 million people. We don't have that many people in Canada alone. That's just nuts. And, you know, so that, that, that is probably about a sixth of their country. And, and that's just insane that that many people would be infected with this virus. And that's because of, of people that do not want to take heed to the warning that this is what's going on and this is the reality we live in right now. Well, I think here I did catch a little clip on the, the news yesterday. I think it was from Vancouver, if I'm not mistaken. And there were a whole bunch of people at the beaches, everybody at the parks, everybody just enjoying themselves. People, there's a health crisis going on here. People are getting sick. People are dying. Take precautions, man. You don't have to become a hermit, but just curtail your activities, be responsible, and look at the well-being of others. And it just seems like some people are just saying, screw it. Who gives a shit? We're just going to do our thing. And that's just ridiculous. So those people, I don't even know what to say to them. And again, some of the, um, the local officials in the government are saying, you people are either going to do this voluntarily or by force. You are either going to stay home on your own and if not, we're going to make you stay home. And then you're going to see all the people start to whine and complain, oh, martial law this, and why can't we go out? Well, it's because you know what, dumbasses? You didn't listen to the warnings in the first place. And there well, we are. Well, here's the sad thing is that the government actually spent $30 million on advertising to teach us how to social distance. Now, their advertising campaign started this morning on this ad. And they spent $30 million. Like we as a society should know and understand what social distancing means. And yet we can't because we're just too selfish as a society. And not everybody, again, everyone that's listening, I don't want you to think I'm talking about you. It's those people that are actually going out and disobeying what the orders that have been given. And okay, to spend I, $30 million on this is unreal. So can I just say something? They could yeah. have saved the $30 million 
come up with a free ass kicking uh, outfit, you know, to send out a bunch of people. You just get your ass kicked for free for a couple of minutes. You learn your lesson and there you go. That doesn't cost $30 million. You know? I, 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 I would sign up for free. I would sign up for free to, to be sent out there to kick some ass, you know. Ass kicker unit. Yeah. Special ops. Master impressive. Yeah. Director awesome. Yeah. I know it's it's mm -hmm. crazy like what some some of the people are doing out there and again if someone's listening and you're one of those people that go out please understand how other people are more vulnerable they could die okay a lot of people are dying okay so please I mean if you can help it just do your part stay home wash your hands whatever if you have to be out there if you have to work I mean you can't get away from that. But we're just talking about the people here that just don't give a shit and aren't listening. Time after time after time, they're being warned by government officials, local authorities, and they just don't care. And I mean, yeah. the news is full of these warnings all the time, all day, every day. It's not like they're they're clueless and they don't know what's going on. Or maybe they are. Who knows? I'm not sure. But anyways. And now, poor unfortunate listeners... More nonsensical blatherings from your semi-conscious hosts, Director Awesome and Master Impressive. With all these interruptions, it's starting to sound like a PBS donation drive during your favorite TV show. I know they are limiting the amount of people that are allowed into the stores right now. I know Costco is a big one that is opening only one entrance right now. Uh, they actually have you almost like you're at a theme park and you're going in and out of the line. And they're mm -hmm. only allowing a certain amount of people into the stores at a time um now i don't know whose mandate that is is that a is that a uh, government mandate or is that an actual mandate just from the store uh, i know another store that is actually lining up bricks with a uh, rope they're all six feet apart so when you do you stand in line to get into the store. You're actually six feet away from the next person. Uh, we actually had a couple of friends that said uh, the other night they had gone to Dairy Queen and some lady came in. She, um, I guess she she coughed or whatever. She touched the door handle to open the door. She went into the store. Or she grabbed the handle for the uh, ice cream cake. She opened that. She grabbed the ice cream cakes and then went in line and stood six feet back from them to practice social distancing. But at that point the guy in front said what's the point now right like oh. you just touched everything in the store and now you want to practice social distancing what is the point are these two still talking how did they figure out how to upload their audio onto the net in the first place this is truly baffling here's my argument is that they're doing it now because they waited too long to do it before this should have been done a long time ago. We probably could have been more than halfway through this or we could have stopped the spread or death of anybody uh, really in the society if we would have put a stop to things sooner where they all just stood there with their thumbs up their asses and just said, it's not that big a deal until now where it is that big a deal where we have to shut everything down. So was this a master plan all along or is yeah. this just the way it's going, right? <laughs> Jeeves, get that damn monkey off my desk. It took a dump in my coffee maker. I need a new job. We haven't done enough testing, so we have to look at the numbers. When South Korea had done 200,000 tests, Canada was at 1,000 tests. Like, that is a huge difference in testing. Wait, wait, so, so repeat that again? 200,000 tests that they had given out at one point, and Canada was at 1,000. Now, wow. how many people that are living in Canada. So we have what, the 36, 37 million uh, population in Canada. We mm -hmm. had done a thousand tests out of that 36 to 37 million people. And how many people were walking around or are still walking around with the virus that haven't been tested? The problem is, is that we don't have the testing kits or the actual uh, capabilities of doing the testing right now uh, on this massive a scale, right? So how many people are actually out there right now that have it that don't even know because this thing has an incubation period of 14 days yeah that's so right. you could be walking around with 14 days of this virus spreading it to family members or friends or whatever if you're not socially isolated or you're not social distancing or whatever it is so the numbers that are out right now are far from the truth they're Again, very far from the truth i didn't know about this huge gap between the testing of south korea and canada like that's that's just crazy and that goes back to the point that you were making that you know we waited too long 
Now here, right. I, I got another one that that uh, I thought about the other morning, and and this could be way out there. It's not a conspiracy theory. Yeah, I know. Throw it out. It's there. not. I took my dog out for a walk, and I was thinking about it the other morning, and I said it to my wife, and she said, "You know what? It kind of makes sense." And I said, "What if this was all designed?" Now, before I get into it, we have to understand what the world is going through. We're talking about the environment. We're talking about global warming. We're talking about the the melting of polar ice caps. What if this was designed and released into the public, purposely designed, so that we as a society, we as human beings, stay home, planes are out of the sky, uh, boats are out of the water, except for, you know, cargo ships that have to deliver, cars are off of the roads, we're, we're not putting anything into the environment that's damaging it, the carbon pollution is going away, you have dolphins that are swimming in the canals in Venice now because the water is actually... Really? turned back to a, a clear state from the, wow, the dirtiness. Wow, I, I had no idea. That's that's um, cool and, and kind of and disturbing at the same time. It is, but I, I, I just kind of had this pop into my head that I wonder if maybe this is a way to repair the environment by keeping people inside. And, and no, I'm not thinking of it as a conspiracy, but at the same time, it kind of makes sense. But, you know... It's just something that popped into my head, and I, I just thought I'd throw it out there. You know, that's now that you bring it up, that does make you think. That's very interesting. You know, you can totally see where things are from these points of view. Pretty interesting take on things. I had no idea about the dolphins. That's just so weird, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I wonder yeah, what else is going to happen, you know, because sometimes you see these deep sea creatures really shallow and... And that's probably just a uh, a precursor to some like natural disaster or some sort of cataclysmic event. I don't know. Like, well, maybe the, maybe we get to see the Loch Ness monster. As you, as you long never as know, you... because I I actually take my dog out. I still take her for a walk, but we maintain social distance from everybody, and everyone's been really good about it. But the the puppy still needs her exercise. But I see so much more wildlife out now. Uh, between raccoons and squirrels and birds. I saw two blue jays the other day, which is very rare to see uh, here, even though we're in Toronto. Like you you would expect to see a lot of Toronto, sure. or sorry, yeah. a lot of blue jays seeing our, our team, our baseball team is named after the, the blue jays. Mm -hmm. But uh, I saw two really big blue jays. I see a lot of geese, a lot of ducks. And I wonder if they're scratching their head going, what the heck? hell's going on like <laughs> why is it so quiet out and like where is everybody and like all did we the, hit the apocalypse or you know yeah. all the, the so, dumbass humans have migrated you know they've left the building yeah, so, well hey like, you I'm know so what surprised we haven't seen coyotes come out yet but you know i'm sure that's coming too few more things that are worth mentioning here okay go ahead uh, yeah. that we can talk about what we've actually done is set up 192 million dollars actually the country of canada has shelled out 192 million dollars to develop a vaccine for this thing so that's a good chunk of change hoping that puts some kind of hope into developing and finding a cure or a vaccine for this thing uh, we don't know where it's headed, but pretty interesting. Another point was is that uh, Harvey Weinstein has actually tested positive for COVID-19 oh, yeah, in his yeah, I heard jail. about that. I heard um, about that. Yeah. I don't know if that's a little bit of karma coming his way. Yeah, Not that probably. we hope that anybody gets ill or dies, but at the same time, hey, you know what? You uh, you did a lot of bad in your lifetime, and uh, something's catching up to you right now. And then uh, it was actually reported yesterday that due to the poor conditions in a Columbia jail, prisoners tried to escape, and 23 of them were shot dead by prison guards over this because they were arguing that the uh, conditions in there were helping the spread of this uh, virus, and um, they tried oh, and to I, escape this uh, horrible time, and uh, I guess that's what happens, right? And so, I totally believe that because I watched a special on some of the inmate conditions in the South American jails. It's crazy. 40, 50, 60 people in a small room. And you can just imagine if somebody's sick, everybody's sick. And if yeah. one person dies, everyone's dying. So they probably said, I die in here or I die trying to escape. At least I'm going to be free for just a few seconds. That I feel so bad for those people. I mean, they're still human beings and you still have to be compassionate to a certain point and, and take care of things properly, even with inmates. And, you know, you can't just... 
anyways, I'm, I'm going to ramble on there. But one important thing and that I wanted to make was uh, when you were talking about the new funding to make the, um, the vaccine, the vaccine they were talking about restarting the manufacturing industry, the sector here in Canada, to try to accomplish that goal. And I'm thinking to myself, it's a little late, isn't it, you dumbasses? You purposely divested yourselves in this country of all your manufacturing resources, factories and everything. Everything was shipped offshore, right? We've been left with our pants down for I don't know how many years. And now you want to get things going again? You know, even with the leaders that we have in our government right now, they've been shutting down our oil and gas industry. They've been just ruining this country. And if anything good can come out of this whole pandemic is that they're being forced. And I really mean that they're being forced because they wouldn't do this voluntarily. They're being forced to actually do stuff, you know, because they don't want to look bad. You know, they want to come off as the good guys. So at least it's forcing them to do something good, even though the reason why we're doing this is uh, just a terrible thing. But that was something that I just wanted to mention as well. And I'm glad you brought that point and, up. So. And, and also, while we're we're on that topic, when this all does blow over and we're all through this thing, let's keep everything in Canada for the time being, right? Let's keep everything in our country. Let's travel Canadian. Let's help out our Canadian uh, tourism. Let's yeah, help out to... our Canadian shops and our mm-hmm. Canadian stores. And let's buy Canadian. Absolutely. And support our economy and support our small businesses and stuff like that while uh, we have a chance to help rebuild uh, everything that's fallen apart right now. And let me just say to any of our American neighbors who might be listening, we think you guys are awesome. We love your country. You guys are amazing. You're our friends. You're right next to us. You support us. We support you. And uh, we wish you all the best. Now I think we're going to get to the portion where we're going to look at the comments from an online video regarding the announcement our leader made recently. And hang on to your hats because this is going to get crazy. The first one that I had to have a good laugh at is because, you know, we've talked about this already and how racism is actually very uh, high in our society right now because of this coronavirus and saying that it came out of China and that it's, you know, all Chinese people's faults and stuff like that. The, The first comment that jumped out at me says, I love how we're racist for not wanting to die. You know, I saw that one. (laughs) and, and, And that's a good comment. But I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you're being racist. You don't want to die. But at the same time, you don't have to be racist about it. You don't have to throw comments out there to people that actually live in the country or were born in the country. You have no idea where they were born. You don't know anything about them. I mean, you know, you have people on the streets yelling, go back home, go to your own country, blah, blah, blah. They are in their own country. This is where they live. This is where they're from. Even if they weren't from here and they are living here, they They're Canadian, and we need to be respectful to those people as well. So it was a funny comment at the same time, but again, let's just all be nice to people, right? One of the comments that I read was we had another uh, typical Chuck Norris comment on the in the comment section, and And I've I've seen this one before. Yes, this is a good one. (laughs) So. I'm not going to mention any of the usernames that make these comments, but if you happen to listen to this podcast and you want me to put your name out there, we can put it in the comments section. I don't want anyone to get into any trouble with the thought police here in in Canada because, you know, Canada, the new North Korea. Hmm. Anyways, the Chuck Norris comment was, I heard Chuck Norris was exposed to COVID. Now the virus is on a 14-day isolation stay at home. <laughs> yeah. And some of the yeah, follow-ups I've seen that were, a few times, yeah. So some of the follow-ups were, it got caught in his glorious beard. Now the virus is dead. The beard is what gives Chuck Norris his amazing powers. <laughs> There's <laughs> always another... got to be a meme or a comment about Chuck sure. Norris. It's no, great. that was yeah. hilarious. And then somebody chimes in, I'll share a secret with you. The celebrities are not real people. They are human like robots with a computer chip in their heads. And that's why I, they don't catch the virus, I guess. Uh, exactly. I yeah. love the comment section at YouTube. It's hilarious. When, whenever you this. watch 
YouTube video, go down into the, the comment section and read them. Like we, we actually have good laughs in the morning sometimes uh, <laughs> before our work, just reading comments on YouTube videos because people are just way out there. Like oh here, here's God. another one. Here's another one. If you're abroad, it's time for you to come home. Sounds like a pimp calling his hose back. <laughs> like, like this is the stuff that is that, that is put into the comment section. Like it's good to laugh at. It's good to laugh at. It's good to have a good chuckle over. Um, okay, so let I me... would probably never be caught dead writing these things, but you know, kudos okay, so to I'll... you for having a good sense of humor. That comment refers to a comment that our illustrious leader made at press announcements, where he basically told all the Canadians that are abroad, it's time to come home, and then people come up with this shit here yeah. <laughs> and you know what it does make your day go by quicker and you know it brings some humor to all the the nonsense that's out there right now so i think this is a uh, a good outlet to have a little bit of fun and uh, let's see i'm just gonna go through some of the other ones here some of them are serious and they're they're questioning the sanity and the the smarts of our leaders and I guess they were using a touch screen to do something in the, the press conference. I didn't look through the whole video, but one person said, wonder if that touch screen gets wiped down or just displays a box that says deposit virus here. <laughs> <laughs> That killed yeah, me. I saw and that then somebody one. chimed in. That's not a touch screen. It's a spread screen. You know what the funny thing is, is that if you were to do any kind of testing on anything in your house, anything that's on you... You have your phone all day and that's it, right? Like it, there's germs all over that. I had a friend of mine who's a friend of hers is actually, he's studying to be a doctor, I believe. He actually took a swab of her phone. I never got the results of it, but he wanted Maybe to take a, a swab thing. of the phone just to see how, <laughs> you know, how many germs are on it. And, and yeah. keep in mind, we work with special needs kids and sometimes you leave your phone out and they touch it and, you know, fingers go up the nose and yeah. scratch in places they shouldn't be, you know, and they grab your phone. Okay, and let's, how many let's, times do you wipe it down from there? But yeah, let's, let's, let's go on try not to comment. ruin yeah. anybody's breakfast, lunch or dinner here. We'll leave that for another yeah. episode. Somebody made another comment with regards to the touchscreen and said, well, that's why South Korean airports require foreign travelers arriving in Korea to install an app on their phone instead, which is and then they said smart move some other people made a comment regarding the that's not a touch screen it's a spread screen and somebody said exactly and then someone else chimed in how often did anyone even wash their hands before this somebody else finished off that train of comments by saying using rubber gloves on the touch screens on atm machines and banks and other places does work in case you wondered and i've been doing that for the last week so that's that's also something interesting, you know, some of the things that people are implementing on their end to uh, protect themselves. Another person made another comment, why does my throat feel irritated every time I watch one of these reports? <laughs> It just doesn't stop. I, I, I remember when True Dope was referring to terrorists he welcomed into Canada as foreign travelers. And <laughs> I, now, I saw that well, one too. The least, I saw that one. You know, yeah. there, there's some really, really good comments on here if you want to scroll through the video. I got to mention this one though. Like I said, in this one person says, strangely enough, I had no problem stocking up on the essentials. They had plenty of beer, cigarettes, and rolling papers. <laughs> <laughs> There's always going to be an abundance. Uh, now, wait wait until they close the LCBO and beer store. What kind of madness there's going to be right there? I think that's going to be insane if that happens. I don't know if they're considered an essential service, but if they're not, that means that the beer stores and liquor stores are about to be closed, and yeah. there's going to be a mad dash to get there. Okay, Myself, me, we're pretty stocked up in the basement, so yeah. we're good. Let me just continue with some of these ones because there's different viewpoints now. It sort of gets into the serious stuff and some of the funny stuff also with regards to uh, President Trump in the state. So one person posted this comment as saying, the media is trying to rebound after being caught lying over and over. Democrats can't beat Trump, so the media needs a new crisis to get some ratings. Dems need something new to try and blame and impeach for. See, people aren't dying from the virus. They're dying because they're already unhealthy. Last year, it was Ebola. Nobody cared. Woke culture now. Let's see, what else does it say here? Okay, this is somebody else replying. Hold on. Uh, you look at some of these responses and these uh, 
these comments here. I just gotta say, us being out of school right now is really hurting us. Like the spelling and the grammar is atrocious <laughs> on here. It's just, I don't know. It's really, really bad. I'm just scrolling yeah. through some of these comments and they're really bad. I didn't mean to interrupt you there, but they're yeah, no, just no, terrible. No, no you just yeah. you just gotta let that go yeah. because even our <laughs> even ourselves, we find you know we we go off the rails sometimes. And I just think, anyway. So let's get back to the response that somebody said. Uh, he responded to this comment that I just read, and he said, "I'm halfway there with you. This is definitely a let's remind the." ants that they need us situation, a socialist power grab, a reset, a wipeout of small and medium businesses who are in competition in the free market. This is a real pandemic, but I believe it's unnatural. It's man-made with a purpose. I have no evidence. But the more you think about the effects of a global pandemic, the more you can narrow down who would benefit from those effects. Globalist Dems, globalist Democrats. This original poster goes on, laugh out loud, I'll go to jail before Trudeau tells me I can't make a living. Let's go on to some of these next comments here. Wasn't Trudeau calling everyone bigots for demanding that they close the borders a month ago? Did he just want to wait until Canada was sufficiently infected also? <laughs> That's a good point because he actually was coming out against some of his fellow politicians who were demanding that they stop all non-essential travel, shut down the borders, be basically call them out. And that's what you know that, what they could uh, do. Yeah, they could build a wall. Oh wait, wait, wait. There that's you wrong, <laughs> wrong, wrong president, wrong prime minister. No, for Canada, a beaver dam around yeah, the whole we'll build country. A beaver dam. That's what we're good for here. And another person uh, alluded to that original comment that the prime minister made in the press conference about being abroad. And uh, this individual goes, "Good thing I'm not abroad. I'm actually a male." <laughs> you and see, some people are very creative with this stuff. It's it's uh, some people may take it as sexist. Some people may take it as racist. Some of these comments are just in plain fun, good old fun. Sure. Uh, if your feelings are hurt, we apologize. We're not trying to hurt no, we don't. feelings. We not get it. Um, but so we're just reading comments from other people. Next one states, and this is from a woman. What do you mean if you're abroad? It's time for you to come home. Who you call in abroad? And then somebody goes, so they were talking about shutting down the border and how illegal immigrants are still coming through the Roxham Road sort of temporary passage that's been in place in Quebec for quite a while now. And they're, from what I understand, they're still coming through and people are saying, well, if you're going to shut everything down, why don't you keep these illegal immigrants out? Because no one's testing them. And so anyways, because Roxham person, Road will be actually closed permanently if they close it now. So yeah, exactly. What, uh, this person made this comment just run through that big hole in the fence somebody else said regarding our prime minister he he tries so hard to look grown up let's see somebody called him mr zoolander <laughs> 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 the next one is the horse has bolted already Trudeau you virtue signaling soy boy <laughs> somebody responds later on in other words we're all bone yep <laughs> somebody posts who are the girls in the thumbnail <laughs> Like this, this stuff, it just kills me. Yeah. The next one is Justina is under globalist orders to stand down and let the country get flooded with coronavirus carriers via China and Roxham Road. Further down, I do not consent. PSYOP. There, some of these wait, are wait, just... Wait, wait, wait. We're not done yet. Wait, hold mm -hmm. on. And the next one is, how's that Trudeau knob get to run a country? I wouldn't trust the... <laughs> to run a hot dog stand <laughs> <laughs> wow and somebody goes i need to get toilet paper somebody says the end of our civilization is approaching this virus will mutate and nothing is going to stop it reset again to the stone age fasten your seatbelt. somebody makes a comment regarding the video that was online saying only asians wore masks in this whole video <laughs> Basically, like, what about everybody else? Oh. And then I'm only concerned that there's no sports. UFC, NHL, NBA, MLB canceled. That's yeah. all they're concerned about. They don't care about anything else. Let's see. I'm just scrolling through some and, of uh, COVID-19, the, the beginning of the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> and we talk about the zombie apocalypse all the time in, in joking, right? We talk about that every, every morning about the zombie apocalypse. Now, what's the one rule when you have a zombie apocalypse? Mm, what do you have know. to Tell be me. able to do? Run? I don't know. Outrun a zombie. Be faster than a zombie, oh, right? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Right? Absolutely. But I don't have to outrun a zombie. I just have to outrun you. Go team, eh, Director yeah. Awesome? Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so now we get into some comments regarding the political leadership from the Canadian and uh, American side. So one person states here, I am sorry you don't have any leadership in Canada. Now you know how we felt under Obama. And then somebody further down goes, orange man bad. They were referring to President Trump in this uh, press announcement. This guy goes on to uh, say after that, pathetic news. Now, this next one, I don't know who this was targeting, but somebody said, is she growing a beard? <laughs> and one of, one of the women in the comment section says, rude. <laughs> This stuff is just, it's too much. And then someone else says, about time, everyone criticized Orange, but Orange was right all along. The man is not stupid. <laughs> he may use the language of a five-year-old, but, <laughs> but he's smarter than you think. And when they're talking about Orange, they're referring again to President Trump. Again, we're not making this stuff up. This is all online. It's just crazy. The next one goes, go back to bed, Justin. And after that, calm down, sheeple. If you watch Q, you'd relax and know this is just cover while mass arrests of bad actors are carried out by the military. It's finally time. Many of us have been watching, waiting since 2012. And somebody goes like, what are you talking about? I mean, we could just go on and on and on and on. But um, I think we should stop it there. Wait, am I still on? Bloody hell. Can't these pod donkeys afford an indication light? People, the pod jerkies use crayons in their meetings. Crayons, people. Ah, screw it. This is just a closing reminder that there are two parts to this Corona episode, and we invite you to check out the second half with Director Awesome and Mrs. Awesome. They'll be looking at a few conspiracy theories floating out there on the net as to how the coronavirus started, and some of the weirder stories surrounding it. Thanks again, and we'll see you in part two. Have a good one. Here we go now! Hey, Pop Jerky. Hey.